So you want to build a big wheel bagger. There's a few things you need to know. There's a couple things you need to understand. Um, and it's all based on what you're going to be building. But I wanted to make this video because I'm currently in the process of finishing one and building two more big wheel baggers. One's a 30 inch road glide, which I've been posting some videos up on the channel. Uh, you're, feel free to check that thing out. It's gonna be pretty sick. I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like when it's done. A couple things you need to understand if you wanna do a big wheel bagger. First thing, the difference between having a street glide and a road glide and a road king. Most of the parts for the big wheel kits are interchangeable, but there's a few things that if you have a road glide that you need to be aware of. If you're going with the American suspension bolt on neck kit, you need to get a fairing mount for that bolt on neck kit because it's specific to their product. It retails at $350. So this part right here, 350 bucks, not cheap. You have to buy quality parts. If you're gonna do stretch bags, stretch tank, stretch side covers, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind, such as if you do a stretch tank, you need a seat that fits that tank. You can't just throw your factory seat back on it because it won't fit. Another thing you need to be aware of is the fact that this changes the handling of your bike and it changes the stance and the look, which all great things that we wanna do, but it changes the handling the most. It also changes your turn radius. If you have problems backing your bike into a spot or in tight spaces in parking lots and going into your garage, having a big wheel bagger is gonna change the ride quality and how your bike actually handles on the road. These big front wheels change your steering geometry. The neck rake changes the steering geometry. They're built to look nice. They're not built to crush corners, you know, really take some hard turns. You can, but you have to take into consideration that if you have stretched saddlebags and a fender, your entry angle and your approach angle, not only into corners, but into parking lots is way different. If you have a stretched fender, you can't cruise into most parking lots if you have the air ride down a little bit, which not a big deal but you have to keep in mind that you could rip off the whole back end of your bike if you come into a parking lot too hard another thing that you need to understand is that when you're buying fiberglass parts buy from a quality dealer I cannot stress this enough because I'm dealing with it on one of the other bikes I'm doing right now if you buy cheap parts you get cheap parts that's the thing you don't save any money when you're building bikes if you have a Harley Davidson, you already understand that it's expensive. Now, customizing it just gets even more expensive. Don't buy cheap Amazon BS fiberglass and plastic injection molded stuff because for one, your fitment's gonna be terrible. The quality's terrible. You have to drill and mount everything yourself. You can't just bolt it all up. And for the money that you spend on it, you're better off just spending a couple extra bucks, spend the other thousand dollars on your fiberglass stuff. So that way you don't have to play custom parts installer when you're trying to put your bike together make it as easy as possible spend a little bit of extra money and you'll be golden it'll work so much better for you another thing when you're building these bikes you have to understand or if you're having somebody else build them give your mechanic a break because this is completely custom stuff and if you're the one buying parts if you're buying terrible quality parts you're buying cheap stuff that just adds more labor time into it it makes it harder for us to actually make your bike the way you want it to look if you buy quality parts you get a quality and install you get a quality bike at the end if you buy cheap parts you get a shitty install you get a terrible looking bike at the end you end up going back spending more money on the stuff you should have bought in the first place and you end up having to go back to the painter and have him try to color match everything and that's more money buy quality parts go to a quality shop or take your time doing it yourself and for the last thing when you come to a shop and you say i have all of the parts i, I bought all my own parts no you didn't you probably forgot something it's probably important such as bearing mount sorry for one i have to cut the side covers down because you bought terrible fiberglass parts amazon is not for motorcycle parts don't buy your parts off of amazon i can't stress this enough i mean you buy fiberglass saddlebags off of amazon there's no there's no saving i gotta cut the side covers down i gotta make custom stuff fit when you're the customer and you show up to a shop it's very hard to justify like labor times to people because i didn't know we were gonna have to do custom fiberglass work i didn't know we were gonna have to send the tank back i can't even send everything to the painter until that stuff comes back and we can actually like sit down and look at it so if you're building a custom motorcycle you have to have custom motorcycle money I hate to break it to you especially if you're coming to a shop do you know it's going to be expensive if you have a harley davidson you know it's going to be expensive by 
quality part. Anyways, y'all, that's it for this rant. I'm getting out of here. Y'all ride safe, ride smart, keep the rubber side down, and always buy quality parts. That's it for this one. Catch y'all later.